going to Hawaii. We're going to Hawaii. We're going to Hawaii. We're collaborating right now. We're headed to Hawaii. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right, guys. So I teamed up with Mitch and Keith, and we are going to do some sample boards for a customer in Hawaii that sent me some inspiration photos. So we're going to take these colors from the photos and we're actually going to do two different pours. We're going to do a Melden marble and then we're going to do a exotic pour. And we're going to let you know what we come up with. All right, so we are mixing up our colors for our first sample board, which is going to be more of a Melden marble type of a finish. So what we're using for our background, we're going to come in with some uh, metallic mica powder in white. So white metallic mica powder, the Alumalite white opaque dye, beach sand luster from Color Passion. Those are going to be our background. And then we're going to come in with our accent colors and that's going to be a Color Obsession uh, dark turquoise, my favorite, Color Passion Rondaqua. Just Resin Forest Green, Just Resin, hmm, what is this, Turquoise Luster, uh, and the Just Resin products, and the Color Passion, and the Color Obsession, these are all highly pigmented paste. And then our last color, which we're going to uh, just use a little bit for accents, is the Bright Gold, also from Just Resin. Alrighty, let's get going. And all these colors we can get where? on rk3designs.com. Starting with B. <clears throat> We're gonna mix up 32 ounces, so we've got 16 ounces of B. Add that first. Now we're doing four ounces per square foot on this particular technique, um, just because we wanna have a little bit extra to play with as we're melding it on the surface. We put B in first because B is a little less viscous, and it just helps us with our mixing process. <clears throat> all right, so we've taken all of the epoxy out of the bucket and put it into our mixing cups, but I still have a little in the mixing bucket. I'm gonna take this little bit of the clear, go tump it upside down on our sample board, and then we're gonna use it to create our grease coat. Okay, so we've got our colors here. We dumped the mixing bucket upside down, so now we've got uh, the clear, and that's what we're gonna use to kind of grease our board. Now, the reason we do a grease coat is because we want the epoxy that we're coming over the top with to flow, and flow easily so that we don't get uh, any surface tension, and by applying a very thin coat of epoxy prior to us pouring, it'll help it do that because epoxy likes to go where epoxy's already been. And you don't have to do this with clear. You can actually take some of your color that you have in your cups, put a little bit down, anything to get that surface a little bit slick and uh, greased up basically. All right, we also want to push it over the edge. Mm -hmm. We'll push it over the edge. He will push it over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> All over my shirt. So with our three colors of our white metallic, our uh, alumilite white dye, and then the beach sand luster. Awesome color. We're just gonna pour these out randomly, meld these in. This will make for our undertones. Then Rhonda's gonna add the colors to really make this pop. So Keith, you're just kind of filling in your dead space, correct? You're not, you're not really doing any kind of pattern. You're just kind of getting that color down exactly. on the board. Perfect. And then once they're melted out, then you'll be able to see those colors and those undertones in just some areas and not in Perfect. Uh, an exact pattern. What I've also discovered is if you pour these out in really thin lines, they get lost in some of the other colors. So I yeah. like to put them in, in heavier like, areas. Kind of like bigger... Blobs. Bobs. That's Blobs. a very technical. It is a technical. Technical description. Technical terminology. Randomly lay them down in blobs. Then we're going to smear it. Schmear we're not going to use our trial. 
I don't want to mix the colors, so I'm not going to press down real hard. What I'm doing is just getting these colors. I'm kind of just skimming across the top. Um, and I'm not too concerned about having empty areas because of the fact that we did put down a wash coat. Okay. As I'm melting these out, if I see that I have too much of one color in one area, I might just take a little bit of that and pull that over into there. You sure are messy. I kind of kind of fling stuff all over. Now those are all just lightly melted out. All right, there's our undertones. That gives us our base colors. Now one thing about doing sample boards is we're using <coughs> quite a few colors. Once we get all these colors on the sample board, we may decide we don't like a certain color. And that's why we do a sample board before we decide to go full send and do a whole big kitchen project. This allows us to do some adjustments uh, if we end up having to do another sample board, we kind of have our recipe uh, kind of uh, morphing as we do each sample board. All right, so we're going to go all these colors our first time. Now, I do know that we want quite a bit of the Rondaqua and the turquoise luster. That's kind of uh, the, the, the accent colors that we want to pop the most. Alrighty, so I what I like to do is kind of come and see where is an area I might want to cover up a little bit or maybe an area that has too much of a solid color. I'll come in and kind of start adding these accents. And I'm not going to use all my accent color right now because um, I may want to add a little bit more towards the end. That was the Rondaqua. That could have been a finish all on its own. <laughs> Hmm, maybe. But. Not quite. <laughs> oh, you mean the first part? The oh, first part. yeah, absolutely. Y'all could, <laughs> if you're just trying to do a really pretty melded marble, what we did to begin with with just the white, the white metallic and the beach sand luster, that is a beautiful cool. finish all by itself. All right, so I am pairing the uh, turquoise luster, the Just Resin product, kind of next to the Rondaqua because as those two meld together, they're going to create even a prettier color. All right, so why don't we do, this is the color Obsession. This is the dark turquoise. Now this dark turquoise is really a transparent color, so it's going to even look a little bit different. So I'm going to kind of bring it in very lightly. I'm not going to put a whole lot right now. That way we can kind of see what it looks like, and I'm going to put some of it over here by itself. And then we're going to just drizzle in some greens. Now, also, I'm kind of doing this a little more pattern than normal because if I were to just meld it all over at one time, I wouldn't be able to see what colors are doing what. So it is a little more patterned than we will probably do on the actual countertop. But this gives us a little bit more control on being able to meld our colors. What's really cool is that is that the Rondaqua? Mm -hmm. Being a solid color and having a metallic uh, right beside it, how that's how it, melding in together. It melds yeah. in together, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I really like that too. <clears throat> All right, so, Mitch, come over here and see what you think about just the way our colors are looking. I like all these colors. I think this is definitely our wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. um, like, I do like when we have bigger areas that's mm -hmm. not melded Great. together. And I do like, too, this as it feathers out when you have a little more sections of white because mm -hmm. that, that customer photo had kind of some chunks of white running. Yeah, through. it did. But so now why don't we come back? Even when you took some of that that after you had melted, mm -hmm. I'm hitting some of the and blank And kind of hit it? Just to add, because it adds just a slight accent to mm -hmm. it. I think the green is right on with that photo. So I'm going to, yeah, so I'm just going to come put some areas. Now I'm bringing back the Rondaqua. Now I'm trying to get rid of the actual uh, zebra lines. Now we're going to kind of start making bigger areas of these colors um, so that we kind of change up the pattern just a little bit. All right, so so far what I'm hearing from you guys is you like all these colors. Mm -hmm. All yeah, right, yeah, they so, went really well, well together. I mean, okay. So good with that photo. I think all right. did a real yep. good job matching the, the, the color scheme. Well, I'm going to actually tell you that Erica with Artist Till Death legit help me pick these colors out. <laughs> so She's if you ever need queen. help mm -hmm. choosing colors or a color palette, hit up Erica at artistilldeath.com. A lot of 
lot of people struggle with that, including myself, knowing what colors work well. That's why these sample boards are crucial, especially when you're working with a paying customer. If exactly. You don't want to just throw something on someone's right. countertops and then start scratching your head. Yeah, exactly. Like, no and like. exactly, and you're totally right. You've got to do sample boards to to be able to see what you you've got. Okay. I'm really liking this. I love the colors. What do y'all think? Mm -hmm, you like, like them? Okay. I do, very much. All right, cool. And they're going to continue to soften out quite a bit. Right. Hey, you. If you like this video, pause the video right now, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for future notifications also. So now we know from the photos that she wanted a little bit of gold accent. So now we're going to come in with our gold. And again, I don't want to put too much. Is that a gold that stays on top that floats? This is actually a uh, bright gold and bright gold does not okay. really float on top like some of the other golds. And from the photos that we had, um, I could tell that it was not really one of those floating golds. It was more of a gold that kind of blended in. Mixes in well. Mm -hmm, mixed into the color. All right, so we'll just kind of. Look how that's selling up. Yeah, isn't that pretty? Yeah. All right, at this point you can decide to use your hand or I love to come in with the Bondo spreader and kind of stretch this color out. Now you could definitely use your hand and you would get a little bit more of a streaking and actually I'm going to let uh, Keith just do that to one side and then that way when we evaluate here in a little bit, we can decide what we like the best. All right. I'm loving this. I think this is great. So Erica did a fabulous job in picking all our colors for us. All right, so you can see here, this is how I melded the gold with the Bondo spreader. I just took the Bondo spreader and I set it down and I kind of twisted and drug it across the surface and that's how I create some of these really cool designs okay um, and you can see right here I drug the gold kind of brought up some of that white into the gold all right and then here too is where I use the Bondo spreader all right so this is uh, some of the gold that we haven't touched yet so I'm going to go into the gold and I'm going to touch it and kind of drag it and kind of smear it as I go and that will that will give you a really cool look. All right, so we have our basic colors kind of laid down. So now I want to come back with a little bit of white that I had in the cups and I just want to add some accent veins and just just kind of to break some of these bigger pieces up because I do know that in the photo that they sent me there were some uh, veins kind of running through that were a little bit more distinct. And by running these white veins through the actual color, that white's going to kind of tend to sink just a little bit and it'll be very natural looking veins. The first finish is complete. That melded marble turned out really pretty. We're gonna get that sent off to the customer. It's time to do our dirty pour. When using the dirty pour technique, you're gonna use excessive material, so that's why we build a tape dam. I'm gonna do a couple rows around my project. I'll iron that on real tight. We're gonna mix the epoxy and then pour it all back into a bucket. Apply that to this project, it'll be complete. I like to use two inch contractors masking tape. You can also use the blue stuff. I'm gonna do a couple rows. This is a very quick step. If your countertop is installed on site, no need to do the back. You're just going to hit those front and side edges and it's ready for the dirty pour. The only time I build a tape dam is when I'm pouring more than three ounces per square foot. My clear coats, my chopped in marble, the soapstones, every time you mix up three ounces per square foot, no tape dam is necessary. There's been some confusion in the industry and that sometimes if you're using a two to one epoxy on your countertop, that's a thinner material, it's gonna flow off. That's where you're seeing folks tape every time they do a coat. No need when using our one-to-one -one countertop epoxy. It's a thicker material. Only tape dam when applying over three ounces. Your dirty pores, your melted marbles, you're gonna to wanna to use a tape dam.
Alrighty, so we're starting on the second design and that design is going to be a dirty pour. So I have extra epoxy left over from when we were mixing, it's just clear. We're gonna turn that over, let it come out and we're gonna use it again as our grease coat. We know what direction that mm -hmm. we're gonna go. She wants more of a linear geode type of a pattern, which is really easy to create with a dirty pour. All right, here we go. Let's go. All right, we've tinted our colors individually. That's the first step of our dirty pour. We're gonna pour those back randomly into our big bucket. We got a little bit of clear epoxy for our wash or grease coat. We'll apply that wash coat all over our board. That helps those colors flow. You wanna help me pour these in and then you wanna take over spreading that? 100%, let's, let's go. go. All right. All right, now because we're gonna create uh, bigger blocks of color, what we want to do is, as we pour them in the bucket, we don't want to pour a little tiny bit at a time and, right. and do little layers. We're going to create um, bigger blocks of color, so we're going to add more color at one time. Yep. Okay. And when we go on site, let's say we're doing this on a big project and that bucket's huge, I'll even pour down the side to slow down gravity yep. so it keeps it from over melding. It keeps those colors segregated, and then when you pour out, it's more like a Yeah, geode. exactly. Mm -hmm. And when the colors that we mixed up, we mixed up, uh, most of our color is gonna be white because mm -hmm. colors have a tendency to kind of take over. Mm -hmm. So we wanna have a little bit more white. And then we came in with our uh, mica powder, our white mica powder and our beach luster. Mm -hmm. And then the next most color that we have is our Rondaqua. And then all of the other colors we have are all in equal amounts, mm -hmm. okay? So we have, sort of an idea of how much of each color we want on the bucket. So mm -hmm. that's why we do sample boards to see yep. how it's gonna turn exactly. out. Exactly, and if we're doing this on site, we are gonna pour our island. Now we're gonna go pour a straight run. We're gonna just keep these color ratios the exact same and it's gonna live in the same family. It won't exactly. look identical, but it'll look like it was cut out of the same mountain. Absolutely. All, All right. right, let's get pouring. Let's go. Pour. All right, so I'm going to bring this right here. Mm -hmm. And we'll start off with white. So I'm gonna put white across the whole bottom, okay? Cool. All right. Then you start adding all the colors and I'll just come in with the white. It's also important when you're doing this, don't let these colors sit in a cup for too long. Because you've got a lot of volume of epoxy, it will heat up faster than if you had this out on a surface. Again, the reason we're kind of pouring on the edge of the cup is it's going to slow down how fast these colors mix together. Should I do a little yeah, over with the gold, so. kind of spread that around a little bit more? Yeah, because our gold is a, kind of a light accent, he's just going to kind of sprinkle it in there. Mm -hmm. If I were to pour now a big heavy amount of resin, it's going to start melding those colors mm -hmm. in a our bucket, and that's much. what we're trying to avoid. Exactly. Cool. Okay, I'm going to let you, aqua back yeah. in there. If you're doing this sample board and then you know you're going to be recreating it, uh, make sure you video yourself doing this because it really will help to go back and kind of watch that video. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Cool. These are cool colors together, Rhonda. Beautiful colors. I'm going to bring this blue on that yeah, side. Yeah, and I'm going to bring look, the white on that. this side. Look at that. A it's like two for lady. one. All right, so as we run out of the color in the cup, we're just gonna dump it upside down and that's also gonna help us grease the board. Yeah, so we're gonna save some gold and actually add that once we pour all of this bucket. Yeah. Out. Just in case, because she liked those fracture lines almost. We just yeah, I think I'm going to save some white as well. All righty, here we go. So we're going to be very careful. Once you have your color in your bucket, you don't want to wait too long, and you want to be very careful not to agitate it too much and cause those colors to mix. Mm -hmm. Yep, so, and you can see as we uh, just laid some of those empty, those cups and let the rest of that epoxy kind of roll out. It doesn't matter, we're just gonna use all those all colors background. as a, a wash coat to help the all of this to flow really easily. And because you're tall, you got longer arms, yeah. I'm gonna let you pour this because I can't reach Copy across. Copy that. All right, there you go. And I think like Erica said, I'm gonna, 
I'm gonna pour my yeah. first one like that, mm -hmm. and then I'll kind of go right around. I it. totally agree. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh my. Yes, these can... these colors are exactly, and this technique of our dirty pour. I think it's exactly what she's, she's wanting. wanting. That looks pretty. That oh looks like my a gosh, that does. That's gorgeous. Oops, the drop. Yeah, so we could kind of, as we're doing this in the kitchen, just make mm -hmm. little kind of crystals and then have mm -hmm. a lot just flowing along with it. Yep, I agree. All right, I am absolutely loving this, guys. This, this is it. This is what we're going to do. Now, because we know this is a dirty pour, we automatically know that we're gonna be using more epoxy for the finish. So if you are doing this as a business, or if you're on a budget, you need to make sure that you factor in the extra material into your uh, job cost. That's totally. super important. Very All good right. point, because you are gonna mix up more. We say, you know, your, your two gallon kit will cover 40 square foot two coats but that's your three ounces per square foot. right that so. does not include so no. normally on an on-site pour where we can't tilt and help the epoxy move personally me and you may be a little different we start our dirty pour recipes at eight ounces per square foot and the reason we do that is because that ensures us that we have plenty of product mm -hmm. on the surface to help it's self-level. And again, that's why we tape our edges so that as it starts to self-level, all of that epoxy doesn't run over the edge. And we keep it taped, depending on your temperature, for mm -hmm. up to an even an hour or so, so that all of this material that's on the surface is starting to gel up and it's starting to get thick. So the pattern is going to stay um, as opposed as if we did this mm -hmm. without the dammed up all that beautiful pattern would roll over our edges and off mm -hmm. to the table. So we're going to let this kind of move out and then we'll let you know what it looks like. Yeah, a lot of the areas, uh, a lot of the dry spots have self-leveled and closed, but to help encourage that was that grease coat and then a little bit of heat. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come back and remove the air bubbles I've incorporated into the resin mixing and moving all that mixing we did. Mm -hmm. We mix with a drill, then we mix by hand. So I'm going to torch it real quick. That's going to help it move. And these dry spots here, I didn't get much of a grease coat, and you could see it getting held up. Mm -hmm. So if you take your finger on that leading edge and just wet it down, this epoxy is now going to self-level over and cover up all that. All right, so we're back, and I think we have it, guys. Yeah. This is amazing, and I think it's exactly what our customer is wanting. We nailed it yeah. with the colors, I think. I agree. And I did, this is it. So, this could be a finish all on its own. But Mitch is forcing me to go to the next step. Yeah. On, the, on our photo, she had a real distinct, some of those gold lines that you right. see in the geode. Yeah. So I think we do one little layer of the gold, I right? agree. But we're going to take it up a notch. Okay? So this is the gold that we used in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with our Rust-Oleum Metallic high shine spray paint now this is the spray paint that you get that's got a really shiny top and it usually says bright shiny finish yep. it may even say fast drying all right so i'm going to take that <clears throat> and i'm going to very lightly spray the top okay now i'm going to take a stick and i'm going to one time I'm gonna kind of mix it. I'm not over mixing it, okay? I just wanna kind of meld it a little bit in the cup. And then we're gonna lay out some of those colors, maybe a little bit more. There we go. All right. What you think? Here, why don't you do this? You want me to get one? Yes. Oh why don't you add the vein first? Okay. I'll give you. So what do you that. what do you think? Like follow one of the distinctive I, lines I, now or I do. I think that maybe come over here where we don't have any gold. Yep. Maybe right here with this blue, we can break that up. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's really cool. What what if you did like a, a pour from the cup? From I don't know, it might be too much, but well, let's try it. Okay. You wanna see? We can just always like it. I'll pour it right through yeah, here. Yeah, perfect. All right, uh, so we'll maybe kink the, the cup up. Yep, 
Right, that's the one thing pouring is you could add too much, but sometimes that thicker pour is beautiful. And I always start off the board and then come on. Oh, yes. I like the bigger pour, Rhonda. I love Here, that. I hit like it. Up. Um, all right, maybe let's. That's cool. Oh, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do where we start it and then we go back. So yes. we kind of outline one little area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's do that. All right, so we're going to start off the board. I'm going to actually start over here. And we're going to come in and we're going to follow this blue area. Ooh. And we're going to go off the board. Yep. All that, right, so we've kind of created almost a geode. Yeah, that's more geode-like already, yeah. just with that little contrast gold line. What yeah, other, I love what, that. What other color could you use at this point if you wanted to do another contrast? Wouldn't you know what? You do busy? we have? Do we have anything here? White. Let's do a little white. We're low on color yeah. now. Yeah. So we have. This is a pro tip, guys. Leave yourself some extra color in your cups so you can play like we're doing. All right. So we have a little Ronde Aqua. I'm going to take this Ronde. <clears throat> Ron Dacqua. And I'm going to put it in the cup with the gold. Is there anything else left over? I got a tiny bit of white. We might okay. be able to do one contrast. Let's do a white. All right. Is that going to work? We're making a little baby dirty pour. Which is what we talked about, you know, as we built this. That's what we're going to do on site. Because we're going to be mixing up much more material. We're going to do 100 square feet. So after we get a base down, we'll come back, build little contrasting exotic pours. We're going to build contrasting little dirty pours that will, you know, this is too much green. We wanted to add a little blue or a little white. You can add that with a little contrasting baby pour. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this spray paint because I can. And I like the different sizes of the, the gold. I, I do you know too. I mean? That's, that's um, great. I'm going to follow this right here. Sweet. Just It's kind of in the middle. It'll kind of... See what happens. Nice. Oh my gosh. All right. We Ooh. have a little baby pour in here. I love that. And by putting that spray paint, it kind of separates the, the vein. It kind of goes to each side of that, that vein and just kind of holds it all in. All right. This is beautiful. Now, the cool thing about it is because we're using the art coat, we have a lot of open time yeah. once we get those colors out of the cup. So we can kind of just play into our heart's content. Yep. And what now, yeah, I love it. And when you did that little baby uh, dirty pour there like that, we already have the material, so it's not going to stretch. It's going to mm -hmm. stay nice and concentrated. So exactly. It's going to look fantastic. I love this. Me too. A combination of the spread out softer geode look to a tight little one man mm -hmm. that's beautiful that contrast was perfect i think she's gonna love this i think we're gonna send her another photo and see what she says let's do it all righty guys so let us know what you think in the comments below would you come back with these very detailed dainty lines or do you like the softer uh melded look of this design let us know and uh we will keep you posted on what our homeowner decides Cool. All right, you want to do a flyover? I do. I'm going <laughs> to shoot, shoot her a couple. Absolutely turned out amazing. So all of these colors that we used are available on our website, rk3designs.com. And also, guys, do us a favor. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for future notifications. And give us a thumbs up if you like this kind of content. All right, this piece is laid out about, we've worked on about an hour, maybe mm -hmm. 45 minutes. We're gonna let it cure up an additional hour or so till the epoxy's thickened up. We'll be back for the next step, which is removing that tape dam and making sure those edges are looking perfect. All right, so it's been about two and a half hours since we first mixed our epoxy in the bucket and poured it out. So it is, going to be time to pull this tape. Now this is all dependent on your temperature of your environment. The cooler, the longer the tape can stay on. If you're in a really hot environment, it's going to be much shorter. So Mitch, show them what to look for. Yeah, exactly. So when I come up to my project after it's been sitting a couple hours, and like Rhonda said, your temperature and your humidity is going to determine when this is thick enough to pull that tape. 
So I will push against my tape dam and I'll see how quickly that epoxy goes back to self level. And then I'll also pull, I'll kind of pre-pull and watch that massive epoxy on my edge to see how quickly that starts to flow. If it moves real quick, I know I gotta wait a little bit. And if it almost, it's like slow motion, I know I'm perfect. Perfect timing. So this is absolutely perfect timing. It's been a little over two hours. And to begin pulling the tape, I kind of start in a corner. Is that how you yeah, do it? Yeah, that's fine. And what I actually do sometimes, I cheat, is I'll actually cut my tape Ooh. just a little bit, and it just helps me that's get way started. That's smart, because I have totally fumbled around on that. So yeah, you want to So I cut around? my tape just a little bit. So we're going to start pulling. Now, when you pull your tape, instead of just pulling it out, I like to pull it down, mm -hmm. and that helps that epoxy to start flowing over the edge. Yeah, you're almost telling it exactly where you want it to go. So after that tape's been removed, I come and pre-wet my edge. Just gonna take that leading edge of epoxy. Rather than rubbing left to right and mixing the green with the blue, you want those colors to stay. So just wet below it, kind of encourage the epoxy. Like down here, we're good. I'll just come here and get any dry areas, you want to make them wet, then the epoxy will flow uniform. This is perfect timing. When your drips are stringy like this initially, right as you peel that tape, home run, you've hit the timing perfectly. One thing to note, this is just a three quarter inch piece of MDF. If you're doing this over your countertops, you're going to have probably an inch and a half or so reveal. So you're going to have a little bit more time and you may have to help that epoxy just a little bit by running your finger, like Mitch said. It'll just help get a really pretty edge. All right. If this was a customer's job, I'd let this cure overnight. I'd come back, lightly sand, apply a clear coat of epoxy, three ounces per square foot. Mm -hmm. Let that cure overnight, come back the next day and apply either the glossy or matte version of the Ultimate Top Coat. Let that cure overnight. Customer's ready to use the countertops. And we're gonna have links in the description of this video to both our flood coat video and our ultimate top coat video. Yeah, I'm absolutely in love with this piece. I love your little snake we did on those little guys. Right? I love it, it looks like a little grass snake. It looks snake. way good, the gold, the bigger gold and the thinner gold I think combined really well. I love how you went around the green. It was that perfect. green was like, hmm, to me until you did the gold and then it tied it all together. It did. Guys, I hope you learned some tips and tricks to get you headed down the road to renewing your countertops with Stone Coat Epoxy. Guys, this turned out amazing. We've already got the thumbs up from the customer. She absolutely loves it. So this was a success. Thanks guys. Yes. We're gonna have an epic time in Hawaii. So stay tuned. All right guys, remember all of these products are available on our website, rk3designs.com. And until next week, remember, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.